in Exodus chapter 20. And verses 3 through 6, Exodus 20, 3 through 6. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. God has always demanded exclusive loyalty and devotion. God is a jealous God. He does not allow uh, uh, rivalry. He demands exclusive devotion to him because there is none that can compare to him. An idol is nothing and yet God is eternal. In 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, and verses 14 through 17, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what, what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Come out from among them. Come out from among them. Satan has always misled the religious world into condoning that which God condemns. Our society has no problem legalizing that which God condemns. Here in North Carolina and throughout the country, we are fighting, trying to uphold that which God commends, and yet laws are being legislated to legalize that which God condemns. And thus mischief is being legalized. Same-sex marriage, homosexual relationships, uh, transgenders uh, picking which restroom they want to use, abortion on demand. There are all kinds of laws that legislate mischief. And thus we are living in a world in which we need to be a light 
There are some things and some times when we cannot go with the flow. We cannot be silent. We cannot uh, just fellowship with that which is unrighteous. And so there are times when God calls us to stand up and make a difference. And sometimes, in fact, most times, we will be in the minority. It won't be popular. It won't please everybody. And so there are times when God says it's time to come out. Come out from among them. The Corinthians had come out of idolatrous worship. And some of them had not severed the ties. They were still practicing some of the things that were being done in idolatrous worship. Fornication was being practiced and sometimes encouraged as it was in idolatrous worship. And the family structure was under attack. And marriage had to be addressed. And thus, uh, there were times when those who stood for Christ had to stand up and be different. And so here, God sometimes calls us out of the world, not to leave the world, but not to operate within the system that the world operates in and has set up. And so when one comes to Christ, then he must leave behind that which is sinful. He must separate himself from things that he may have been exposed to throughout life. And yet those things, when they are contrary to God and contrary to right, then there must be a termination of that which is sinful. And thus God wants us to make our stand with him and not to stand with the world. When we consider that, the Corinthians were told to come out because Christians are not to have spiritual fellowship with unbelievers. When it comes to spiritual fellowship that cannot be enjoyed by Christians with unbelievers. Notice again verses 14 and 15. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? That's a rhetorical question. The answer is obvious. And what communion had light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? These things are opposites. They are poles apart. There is no harmony. There is no agreement. There is no fellowship. There are times when fellowship cannot be enjoyed. And when it comes to spiritual fellowship, those who line up with God, those who line up with Christ, then they cannot compromise and enjoy spiritual fellowship with unbelievers. Spiritual fellowship is to condone and to endorse religious error, that which contradicts the word of God. When God teaches a particular thing, and then the religious doctrine teaches the opposite of that, and it calls right that which the Bible calls wrong, then there can be no agreement. There can be no harmony. There can be no fellowship. And therefore, we have to depart from that. We cannot endorse it or uphold it. In Ephesians 5 and verse 11, the Bible says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, God enjoys fellowship with his children, and he wants us always to have fellowship with him. But because God's nature is all about right and just, then God cannot fellowship darkness. He can't fellowship error. He can't fellowship sin. And for us to maintain fellowship with him, then we got to stay with him, with right, with that which is just, and that which is in harmony with this word. 
However, we have an adversary. We have the devil who has no desire to fellowship with God, to do that which is right, or to uphold truth. So we are going to determine who we are going to endorse. If we're going to stand with God and stand with right, or we will stand with Satan and stand with wrong, and there are no fellowship between the two. And so when we make our stand, we are representing, we are validating either God or the devil when it comes to religious fellowship. Now, I stress religious because that doesn't mean you cannot associate, you cannot be friends or in families with folk who are not Christians. But when it comes down to common fellowship, eating common meals and, and spending time with family, that's different from spiritual fellowship. There are some things God has ordained that we do toward him. We worship him. We serve him. And he prescribes how that is to be done. There are those who are not in the light who don't have the same respect for those things. And thus they alter, they modify, they change, they pervert that which God has regulated. And conclude it doesn't matter. As long as you're doing it the best way you know how, that you don't have to do it exactly like God says it. But that's Satan. And so what we want to look at this morning, when is it that we ought to come out and cannot enjoy fellowship with the religious world about us? Spiritual fellowship is to ignore the distinctions between righteousness and unrighteousness. Again in verse 14, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness. Those two are not the same. They are poles apart. Righteousness and unrighteousness are different. There's no fellowship between the two. Thus, I must make a distinction in what is righteous and what is unrighteous. That which is righteous, I can fellowship. That which is unrighteous, I cannot. And therefore, God expects for his people to determine righteousness from unrighteousness. And to fellowship with unrighteousness breaks fellowship with God. Amen. Turn, if you will, to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And notice verse 18. <coughs> Romans 1, 18. Let's start at verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. There is no excuse for not recognizing the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness. God has manifested himself, he has manifested his will, and he has exposed that which is unrighteous. Now drop down to verse 8. He specify and illuminate on this. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, 
deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, the spiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. God makes it clear there's a distinction between righteousness and unrighteousness, and we cannot have fellowship with unrighteousness because that will cause us to be subject to the wrath of God. Spiritual fellowship with darkness will nullify our fellowship with God. They can't coexist. Turn to 1 John 1. 1 John chapter 1. Having fellowship with God is pertinent because we can't go to heaven without it. We can't have fellowship with sin and, and, and the devil and end up in heaven. We're going to end up eternally with the person we fellowship and that the one to whom we submit. In 1 John 1 and verse 5, <coughs> 1 John 1 and 5, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from our sin. And so here we find that maintaining fellowship with God is predicated upon not walking in darkness. God is light. There is no darkness at all in him. And for us to claim to have fellowship with him, while walking in darkness, God said we can't do that. That's not true. We might claim it, but God says it's a lie. But we got to walk in the light, in the light of his word, the light of his truth, to have fellowship with God. And when we do that, we have access to the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. It is imperative that we maintain fellowship with God by walking the light and fellowshipping with him and not with unrighteousness. Also, the devil is behind the contra contradictory doctrines that divide the religious world. Sometimes it, is, it seems as if the devil will put out a false doctrine, hide his hand, distort it, and try to make it seem like it's of God. He would take whatever God says and twist it and distort it so that the average person would think they're doing right when in fact they're doing wrong. And that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve in the garden when Satan came and tempted Eve and she saw that the fruit was good for food. It was be the desire to make one wise and she partook of it. She bought into his story hook, line, and sinker and ended up sinning. And consequently, he works the same way today, through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 1 beginning, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1, now the Spirit speaks expressly, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidden to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to receive with thanksgiving of them who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good 
and nothing to be refused if it's received with the word of God in prayer. And so here the Bible says very clearly that the time will come in the latter time some will depart from the faith. There's a body of teaching that God has given us that we must not depart from. But there are those who will depart from the faith. And they'll be influenced by doctrines of devils, by seducing spirits, and they will come up with ideas that contradict the very faith that we have embraced. We are to contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. And thus it is not being um, high-minded, it is not being arrogant to demand the truth be taught and to oppose that which contradicts truth. We are standing for God. God has given us his word, and he said, I will fellowship with you when you walk in the light. And so when doctrines of devils are taught, we can't embrace that. These doctrines of that forbid uh, the so-called clergy to marry, forbidden to marry, demanding celibacy, is a doctrine of devils. And those who practice it many times engage in homosexuality and other kinds of abuse and fornication because they have a man-made law that forbid them from marrying. And yet, the Bible is as clear as a bell that that's a doctrine of devils. There are those who command that you can't eat certain meats, or perhaps pork or whatever. Well, that's personal uh, prerogative. One choose not to do so, that's fine. But to make a law and command to say that it's wrong, and God said every creature is good, that's contrary. And so what he's simply saying is that we can embrace false doctrine. When God tells us what's right, then that's right. And if someone said that's not right and it's wrong, then that's wrong. And there can't be fellowship when there's a difference between what God says and what man says. When that occurs, there can be no fellowship. And then, of course, we can associate with people with whom we don't agree if we don't participate in their religious error. In John chapter 17, the Gospel of John chapter 17, in verses 14 through 16, listen to Jesus. John 17, 14 through 17, uh, 16, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We're in the world. He doesn't desire us to leave the world. We had to go out there and jump off a, off a bridge. But while we're in the world, we stay away from evil. We don't fellowship evil. We don't condone that which is false. We stand up for that which is right. And we represent Jesus by so doing. They are just like me. I'm not of the world, and neither are they of the world. Don't try to change the church to be like the world. It's supposed to be different. There must be a sharp distinction between those who are in Christ and those who are in the world. It should be like light and darkness. That doesn't mean that we're ugly. Doesn't mean that we're unkind. Doesn't mean we dislike anybody. But we're going to stand for God because God's ways are right. And when we're standing for God, we're standing against the devil. And yes, the majority of people might listen to him, but their eyes are closed. Jesus said, I have given them thy word. They know right. They know truth. They can discern between righteousness and unrighteousness, and they will have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Secondly, God won't fellowship those who have spiritual fellowship with error. <coughs> Back in 2 Corinthians 6, <coughs> In verse 16, the Bible says, And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. 
As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The temple of God has no fellowship, has no agreement, has no covenant with idols. They oppose a part. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3.15, if I should tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The church behaves differently than from idols. Idolatrous worship is not the same as true worship. In John 4, 23 and 24, our worship must be in spirit and in truth. And so then the temple of God has no agreement with idols. False worship and true worship are not the same. True worship is predicated upon the word of God. False worship can be practiced in any way that is in the mind of men. But only true worship pleases the God of heaven. The church is the temple of God, and God dwells in his church. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And notice verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye? Did you not know that God's temple is the church? And when you are part of the church, then God dwells in you. And thus we are the place where worship is acceptable to God. And thus it cannot, it must not be defiled. It must not be contaminated. It must not be polluted. Because that's the place where God meets with us in our worship. And we must not allow it to be contaminated. And thus, whenever there's a contamination of worship, the Bible says come out from among them. It cannot be acceptable. God does not dwell where religious error is being practiced and taught. In 2 John 9 through 11, 2 John 9 through 11, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither be it him gospel. For he that be it him gospel is a partaker of his evil deed. God makes distinction between sound doctrine and false doctrine. And we have to abide in sound doctrine to have fellowship with God and his Son. And anybody who won't stand on that, we can't endorse, we can't support, we can't uphold, or we become a partaker of their evil deeds. It's not being ugly, not to fellowship error. It's being obedient. And then, of course, to be received by the Lord, we must come out of error. We can't endorse it. We can't defend it. We can't support it. We can't obey it. We have to come out of it. Again, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you. You shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. God said what he meant. And he meant exactly what he said. He determines whom he fellowships. And he wants to fellowship everybody. But everybody want to abide by his word. So he fellowship those who will. 
And those who submit to it become his sons and daughters, and those are the ones he fellowship. And those that we're not going to do that, God said, that's your prerogative. <laughs> that's your choice. But now that puts you in line with the devil and what he has to offer. And so it's up to us to determine, come out from among them. God uses the gospel to call people out of error. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. God wants everybody. The call is to all, but all have to respond. So those who want fellowship with God are those who respond. And thus, God is being fair. Everybody in the world have access to the gospel. But it's the one that, he, that believes and is baptized are the ones God will save. To enjoy fellowship with God, one must separate himself from that which is un unclean. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Those who have returned into captivity of sin are to be retrieved. There are those, sometimes individuals, sometimes whole congregations, that have opened the door to error and embraced error and fellowship error. And the Bible wants you and I to call them out, just like God is calling the Corinthians back. You who have gone out to fellowship error, I'm calling you out of that. I'm calling you back to truth. And thus we have to have that same mindset. In James 5 and verses 19 and 20, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one converted, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. It's not being ugly to teach the truth, to call people out of error, because that's how we save them. It's possible to go astray, but love was retrieved. And so preaching the gospel, reaching out to those who are departed from the faith is what the Lord says, that's how I call them back. I call them back with the gospel and that's being loving and kind to do so. What about you this morning? Are you in fellowship with God? Or are you in fellowship with everyone? We are on one side or the other. And God invites us to be his sons and daughters by separating ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and all uncleanness. And he'll clean us up by the blood of his son. Do you have faith in Jesus Christ that he's the son of God? Are you willing to denounce your sins and come out of your sins by means of repentance? Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Are you willing to acknowledge Christ as Lord and denounce Satan at the same time? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then submit to baptism, whereby that blood that washes our sins away will be applied and our sins will be removed. And then we are to live faithfully, fellowship with God, worshiping God, serving God, until we're called from labor to reward. Or it might be that you had come out of sin, but you've gone back. You've backslidden. You become slack. You become slothful. You're not serving as you are. You, your fellowship and error, you're engaging and supporting that which is false. And God is calling you back. Come out from among them and be your separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I'll receive you. God is merciful. He's forgiven if we're willing to repent. If you're in Christ, you haven't been faithful, come back to him. Come back repenting. Come back asking for the prayers of the saints so that you again can have fellowship with your creator. You need to respond this morning to the Lord's invitation, whether by getting a relationship with God, by becoming a Christian, or by being restored and having fellowship renewed with your creator. If we're going to assist you in either way, come now while we stand and sing.